Just watch and learn, my friend. <laughs> Mira is actually one of the like few points of strength you can lean on right now. Night Eye. All yeah, Might chose yeah. wrong. Mirio should have inherited the power. Maybe All Might chose wrong picking Night Eye. You ever think about that? Something Night Eye must have gone down if they're not even on speaking terms anymore. Hard to imagine why. I mean, Night Eye is such a pleasant person. But I can at least shoot for saving a million instead. So that's what I'm doing. And he wears it on his chest. Put on our costumes and start hitting the streets. That's when we become heroes. And then take off our costumes. La million. La million? <laughs> and then this just happens. Just out of the blue. Oh, Mirio's there at least. That's good. Nothing can go wrong with Mirio there, right? <laughs> she fears the hand. Why is she trembling? You should be she more She knows what careful. hands can do. Yeah, yeah. So they got history. This is not a chance encounter. And Deku knows who he is already. Be careful not to arouse any suspicion. Right. Be careful not to bump into him in an alleyway. My work study had begun. It was always going to be that way though, right Deku? <laughs> he's just sort of destined to be in the mix at all times. And it's not just because it's a show, right? It's because he's the successor to All Might and is extremely talented and has a nose for growth, which is why he keeps putting himself in these situations, which is why he's always at the forefront of, you know, these events. I hope you'll forgive my daughter, Hero. Daughter? I don't know what you do in this situation. You guys are famous around here. Yeah. Just gotta butter him up. The butter him up. It keeps out the filth. On your feet, partner. Can't do much heroing from down there. He's good. His guard's obviously up. He's definitely living up to what Night Eye said last time about not hesitating. So Mirio has been one of the best surprises for me so far in the end of season three and early season four. And I really love his character, if that's not obvious by now. He's such a great fit as a senpai role. And interestingly, he's sort of taken the place as this person that we lean on, you know, because not only is he super talented, but he has the right disposition. He sees things in this sort of zoomed out way where everything's going to be fine. You know, if you just trust in life and trust in experience to give you the things that you need. He has proved things to himself so that he can believe in himself. And all of that combined makes him feel a little bit less in his own way, a little bit less burdened by doubt and anxiety. And, and worry and so he's able to just act in a way that feels good and so we lean on him you know that's the kind of thing that inspires confidence being the kind of person who's kind of locked down or cleared away some of the personal struggles to the point where they actually are engaging with the world sort of honestly and freely that's a lot of the time where, where magic happens and it's really great for Deku to spend time with him because for all he's accomplished for how good he is there's still a lot he has to learn and a lot he has to experience and so Mirio in a surprising way is sort of giving me something I, I feel was maybe missing from the Almighty experience which is that they didn't really do stuff together you know they didn't really engage that much on the field as far as i can remember except for the uh the two heroes movie which is you know what made that movie good but seeing mirio in action kind of raises the the ceiling i feel a little bit for what we're aiming for and where deku is in relation to like what it could be we're just using our internships to get some experience speaking of which we need to finish patrolling this division by lunch what do you do Come about on, this girl let's though? go right this is a really sticky situation how do you handle this? The, yeah, I, I do not envy Deku right now. Mirio, <laughs> we're leaning on you, buddy. You're making him more suspicious. Sure. Right, but Deku is Wait. clearly onto something. She's got bandages all over. I don't know over. what you do. Those are just from playing rough. <laughs> she's got to say something, although she's petrified. It's dangerous to make assumptions well, here about we go. normal here for we go. other people. Yeah, everybody's different, am I right? This is bad. Yeah, this is real bad. We have to let it go. Ooh, this is tough. Now Deku and Togedar are hero would at abandon odds. a frightened child. Oh no, we were leaning on you. We were leaning on you, Mirio. We're heroes. I really want them to be in alignment right now. You heroes really pick up on the subtlest things, don't you? It wasn't that subtle. I'd prefer to discuss it where we won't be overheard. Interesting. So determined to do whatever they want. The gloves are coming off, literally. That sometimes they just don't listen. He lured them into an alleyway. What did I tell you about dark alleyways? What did I tell you about dark alleyways? Way back in season two. She did that to save them. Oh, good. Sorry to involve you in our family drama. You just avoided death. For now, let's report to Sir. Very interesting first encounter. Chrono, prepare the bath. Yes, sir. I'm real sorry, boss. I swear, I makes barely everyone wear took these my masks. eyes off her. The kid made a break for it. He oh my them. god. They're all infected with hero syndrome. He's disgusted by them. It's not just an ideology. I should have used foresight on you too. It's my fault. Yeah, why does he use it all the time? I'm gonna think of it. Chisuki, he has a daughter. A daughter? A little girl. Perhaps, I mean, he, he has a little girl. Ari. Is it really his daughter? We don't know. There must be something we can do to protect her. I won't let your arrogance interfere with this case. This is sort of a big deal, a major obstacle 
for this group. You're not so special that you can save whoever you want, whenever you want. I don't know, I feel like if anyone is, it's Deku. <laughs> this is a really tricky Good situation. Good intentions alone aren't enough to save the world. I mean, that's true. This is a rough internship for Deku. Things are just not exactly gelling from the beginning. The first day of my work study ended. What a day it was. Me with a sick feeling in yeah. my stomach. That's my feeling too, this whole thing. It's just, it's a weird, grimy feeling throughout the season so far. You're the core of my plan, you know. Yeah, she's, and she's I getting would hate to have to get my what is her hands quirk? dirty. It's Shigaraki from the League of Villains. Yeah, we know who he is. <laughs> he says that he's got an answer for you. Interesting. I have a feeling, given the fact that he's thought things through, he probably has a long-term plan. He might actually agree to some of the terms, to overhaul his terms. Back to Deku, though. I don't know what to make of this. This is tough, because he does sort of answer to a higher calling than, like, work functions, you know what I mean? But we've gone down that road. You know, we've gone down the road of not listening to your superiors and not taking advice from people who are more experienced from you, being impulsive, and we know that that doesn't always lead to good places. I mean, see Exhibit Ida. And despite any differences in personality or methods, Night Eye, Mirio, One Size Too Small T-Shirt Girl, all have their hearts in the right places and so there might be something for Deku to learn but on the other hand it's Deku and his alignment to helping people is one of the strongest forces and you sort of can't count him out in that way so I don't know it's very difficult earlier I was talking about how Mirio is sort of free because he believes in himself and because he knows who he is Deku doesn't have that personal freedom in all areas but I feel like when he's connected to something he does have it and that was a moment right like for all his anxiety about patrol for all the ways he feels inadequate he would not have missed a beat if it came to having to fight to help that girl, right? Because that's one of his strongest things. That's something he knows for sure. Like, he's resolved any doubts he has about that. I mean, he never really had any to begin with. He's very, very connected to that idea of, like, helping people and saving others and following his gut in that way. So, for me as the viewer, I feel a similar pain as Deku. You know, I feel that kind of, that frustrated, trapped feeling. Class is starting now! Sadly, I must mark Sue and Uraraka tardy! Their absences are excused. Those Did they come back? places to do work studies. That's great. Were there lots of scantily clad that heroine to the agency? Uh. No, it wasn't. Oh yeah, there is one. There actually is one. There's this girl, like she doesn't know how to pick shirts that don't reveal a lot. Please. So much Please ideological go. conflict. Just from every direction. I couldn't concentrate in class. Yeah, this is weird. It's really weird, the whole thing. All Might's out jogging right now. Bad timing. You got a lot of people you can go to though. Go to Aizawa maybe? Yeah, I guess for specific information. <coughs> Stop coughing. Stop it. I have to talk to you! <laughs> That's true. An All Might normal run can't keep up with a one for all run. Night I understand how one for all works. Yes. He wanted you to pass it on to Togeta, not me. Yes. You had to know I'd find out everything. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't really matter. That doesn't matter. That's not what's at stake right now. I need to know everything, All Might! Not as your fan, but as your successor! Man, now Deku's fighting with All Might? Anything's better than having you keep secrets from me. Spill it. Yeah, I'm with Deku on this. I regret this. No. The truth will set you free. So Night Eye had always been a fan of mine. Yeah, okay. I'm here for this. <laughs> I need this. But eventually I Why gave him? in and Why? let him be my number two. Why? Turns out we had different values. Oh, maybe he saw it coming. He knew what would happen. If there are frightened citizens, then I have to go to them. Keep doing hero work in that body and the entire world This is the dark side that no one else suffer. saw, that they saw. Yeah, right, right, right. I know the importance of the symbol. I revere its function. But please, All Might, you can't even smile right now. This is really painful. If you continue your hero activities like this, I won't support you. Wow. This makes me like Night Eye a lot better. I mean, this is something I felt about All Might for a while, you know? It's easy to put yourself in All Might's shoes and realize that your role is important, and maybe more important, you think, than your yourself and your own well-being, and so you can sacrifice one for the other, and there is something noble about that, but there's also something incredibly flawed about that, and it's not a sustainable strategy long-term. And at the end of the day, it's All Might, and so you just gotta get out of his way and let the, let the guy be All Might, you know? But I think one thing it misses is the concern that people have for him. I mean, look at the people in this room. They're seeing a side of All Might that the world doesn't see. They're seeing the reality of it, which is kind of dark. You know, All Might is literally dying. I'm not convinced that he isn't still dying even though he's passed on his powers. It seems like he's ill. And that's tragic for the people that lean on him as more than just this symbol, but as All Might, the person that they know personally. And I think it's especially painful if you think there could be a solution, which is leaning on others, you know, letting other people pick up the slack and having trust that other people can do the things that you can do and will be there for you in times of need. To give them that opportunity to not think that you alone have to be the one making sacrifices or that you alone have to do everything yourself. There are plenty of people who are inspired by All Might that would have loved to have 
picked up that role. What's kind of cool, I think, is that my gut feeling is that All Might himself has reflected on this and has come to sort of maybe new realizations about the mistakes he's made and all the pressure he's put on Deku and not wanting that to continue. But I'm not exactly sure where he'll fall on that yet. But I think this scene shows that Night Eye's heart is in the right place. This was not a petty squabble. I mean, this was literally him protesting the sacrifice of, of just someone he really loved, deeply loved. So much so that he's willing to give up the greatest thing he could ever hope for, you know, being All Might's right-hand man or whatever, in order to make that point clear, which is a very principal thing to do, I think. You saw it, didn't you? I told you not to use your foresight on me. How many people will have to fear for their lives? He's taking everything on his own shoulders, always. I can change the future! At this rate, events will play out as I've seen. That can't happen! Don't you see? How far can his foresight stretch? I mean... I have to be able to say that I am still here. It's the hero theme, but a little bit, a little bit darker, not as confident. I'm wondering now about Night Eye and if he isn't saying things to Deku just because he knows it's the right thing to say. It could be one of those like, this is the future and the future is unchangeable. And this is what I said in that moment to get to the future. So I'm going to say it. You know, maybe that's part of why he's being so rough on Deku and saying he's not the, not the one that Mirio is the one. He might know. Just a, a random theory to throw out there. Please stop! If you continue like this, you'll face off against a villain and die an unspeakably gruesome death. What? You mean like a power death? I'm sorry. I didn't want to tell you. Because... It's not a bad thing. Because you're my fan. Oh, wow. Some real vulnerability there. I get that. It wasn't for Deku, it was for All Might. Going to die? That's when it really hit me. So it hasn't happened yet. I told Night Eye my plan. But he was so opposed to the idea. And the rift between us grew even deeper. You're passing your one for all onto a quirkless middle school student? I think it actually makes sense, all things considered. You know what? Going back, I, I think I made a, a comment about how All Might said something that was unsatisfying. It was when he was talking to Bakugo and he told him he gave the powers to Deku because it would be good to give him a shot since he didn't have one, since he had no powers. And that was an unsatisfying answer to me at first because there are so many more reasons why All Might would give Deku his powers. It's really his spirit and his character, right? But it makes a lot more sense in reference to the choice between him and Mirio. Because now what you end up with is not Mirio, you know, best boy, always cheerful, learn from experience, look at my willy Mirio, with superpowers, you get always cheerful, best boy, look at my willy, superpowered Mirio, and superpowered Deku. That seems to me like a win. The boy wants to save people. He can't do that with intentions alone. There are any number of other people That's who are That's why he suitable. has one for all. He thought I was an idiot throwing my power away. So he started training a candidate he thought was better. But you know what? Like, they're all missing the big picture, no? I mean, I said this about Bakugo too. It doesn't have to be an All Might replacement for things to work out. There are just so many ways things can go that are that are good. They're all very attached to this one particular vision of how the world has to be, but the world has already changed. You know, the world has already adapted. They are probably going to best serve the world by being what they are, not by aspiring to be what someone else has been before them. And that's definitely more difficult. Like, it's more difficult to find who you are and what your role is and to put down sort of this golden image you have of what you could be in this fantasy version and then actually like put your feet to the ground and find out who you actually are and what you actually can be and what the world actually is and through that process actually be of some service. I mean I have my fears about Mirio's future but imagine that that guy goes on to have a full career. There's no way he doesn't tip the scales to the benefit of everyone. That's just what he is. So it doesn't matter that he didn't get one for all necessarily. And Deku doesn't have to be the guy. You know, he doesn't have to be like the one figure that everyone leans on as a symbol of peace. Deku is going to be a force, as is Bakugo, as is Ida, as are all of them. And I feel like in some way they're, they're being a little bit distracted by this one thing, you know, by this symbol thing. And that in essence is one of the weaknesses of that simple thing is that it's such a central point of failure as we're seeing play out right now with the villains becoming emboldened once all might's gone they're not free they're all living under this this burden that's been placed on them they're living under this trap however great that trap may feel of this untouchable legend no one will ever ever be All Might. It's just impossible because he was the first All Might. He is All Might. So the goal is not to be All Might. The goal is to do good, right? And so there are just so many ways that they can do that. There's just so many players in this game that can have tremendous influence. And the sooner they can figure that out and be authentic and sync with each other, the more powerful they're going to become. And they need to figure it out fast because I feel like that's exactly what the villains are doing right now. The villains are figuring out who they are and what their ideals are and carrying out their own visions, you know? So there's a lot of growth to be had here all around in this hero society. Society. Oh my, please, tell me about Night Eye's vision. How far into the future was it? That's my question too, yeah. Six or seven years. This can't happen. 
I want you to live, All Might! Yeah, we all do. I want you to introduce yourself to the world. And proudly say, I am here! I feel like he's softened up on that a little bit, All Might. Until I can keep our pact. But Watch not me a, tell a fair them request. I am here! I need you here! But he doesn't really need him. When I heard I would die, I accepted that as my future. <laughs> wow. Just like that, huh? Keep running at full speed until I got to the finish line. There's no other way for All Might. All another those days we spent with sunset. one another affected me. Paralleling their first You were timid and meeting. quirkless, but you had a heart. And then your mother told me to live so I could protect <laughs> and help raise you. Damn, Mama Deku came in clutch. I promise that I will live. I won't wow. be killed. I will mold my fate and strike down anything yeah. else that gets in our way with this fist. <laughs> Damn, that's awesome. I believe it. Imagine, you're so strong you just defeat the future. But if anyone can do it... <laughs> but you see, so far everything has been as he said. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Get out of here, Night Eye, with your predictions and your weird tickle devices. No matter what happens to you, I'll be there to help fight fate! This is like their, their spirit, their unbeatable spirit to the nth degree. Fighting fate itself. That was a pretty epic fist bump. I'll try not to be too much trouble, I promise. <laughs> But they can do it though. Well, there we go. There's the heart I was looking for. I, like Deku, have been on my back foot and had this feeling of unease. But there it is. You know, that's the spirit that I've come to love and appreciate about this show and Deku and All Might in particular. You know, that un unbeatable, I'm going to go until the finish line kind of thinking. And not even like destiny itself will stop me. Whether or not it's true, whether or not it's possible, just the articulation of that is enough in itself, I think. Because it's not just about the circumstances, right? It's not just about how things go. It's about how you show up, you know, and what you think about yourself. And who you know yourself to be. And it really doesn't get much better than that, than like, whatever happens, I'm gonna do my best to do what I think is right. And nothing will get in my way in that regard. And then, you know, you just sort of see what happens. That for me is just way more powerful and rings way more true than there's nothing I can do. I give up or whatever. And that all may be the case actually, but it's the spirit I think that counts, not necessarily the actual events. I mean, if All Might dies, it's still heroic that he stood there and said that and felt it and made that commitment, you know what I'm saying? That's what makes it inspiring. That's what makes it so cool. Not the truth value, not whether he's right or wrong about the way things will play out. Although, because there are ultimate heroes, a lot of times it's both, right? It's it's the intent and the will and the values, and then also carrying that through and making it happen. So what I hope is that this does lead to a good resolution where they find a way around it once they're committed, you know, once they have actual feet on the ground and have a, a solid plan in motion and are connected to each other. As a side note, I understand the thinking of Deku wanting to do it in front of All Might, to have All Might be witness to his success and to have All Might be proud of him but I think what that kind of thing misses is that All Might's already proud of him for who he is. It doesn't really have to result in All Might witnessing it. I feel like in a, in a way, in a big way, he's made peace with a lot of the things that were bugging him. Maybe even the things that caused the problem in the flashback we saw with Night Eye seeing All Might just throwing himself away and not being able to let go of certain things and clinging to this vision that it was always going to be him all the time and that no one else could fill the role. Here, it seems like he has an extra dose of humility, you know, listening to Deku's mother and seeing Deku as the future and believing things can turn out for the best even without him being powerful. You know, it's, it's just really, really cool. It's great stuff. Back to back and credit scenes. Look at this. What a boring office. <laughs> I don't Yaku's like office. Really cluttered rooms. What's your answer? Do you really mean what you said on the phone the other day? That you'll join us under the right conditions? Yeah. Right, 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 yeah. Which is exactly the right thing, I think, for Shigaraki. Because that is the very thing that proves his conviction, which is the thing that everyone keeps calling him out on. The fact that he's willing to sacrifice his role as the ultimate number one, let's say, or even just pretend to do that and suffer some sort of humiliation, likely means that he finally does have this big goal that he feels really connected to and is convicted towards doing, and is no longer this sort of juvenile, watch everything burn, lashing out at others character. So it's going to be a lot of fun and also legit terrifying to see their alliance as two villains with conviction and similar devastating powers. But that's the end of this episode. I'll see you next time when All Might joins the cast of The Office.